Gloria Murata. This is the Political Woman Podcast. Thanks for being here. Talking about racism. Trump, racism, and the election. What a topic. (laughs) Heavy, heavy, heavy. 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia who was barbarically murdered by an illegal alien animal. Uh, The Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. And Nancy Pelosi told me that. She said, please don't use the word animals when you're talking about these people. I said, I'll use the word animal because that's what they are. Here's what Trump has been talking about on the campaign trail. We're going to have a border bloodbath. This is a, an old one that he's saying again and again. Other countries are sending their, quote, prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, and terrorists. It's the worst they have. No evidence of this, of course. And they send the people, by the way, that they want out. They're not sending their finest. They're sending people that they want. That's why they come out of jails and prisons. That's why they come out of the mental institutions and insane asylums. Uh, human trafficking now is that we, mostly women. Migrant crime. They're poisoning the blood of America. Give me a break. This hate speech from Trump, this racism, which is applauded by people at his rallies, worst yet when he did the whole recently bloodbath, Sound bites. He was standing on a stage and there were cops standing behind him. What does this do for the rest of us? What does this say? What message is this sending to our brown and black and Native American children? What message does that send? I'm asking the cops of all the Trump racist comments. The worst is his enablers. The worst are people who stand by and say nothing and do nothing. Or, worse yet, stand behind him and agree with him. He derailed, and Republicans were with him on it. The immigration bill, which was a good bill because it didn't make either side really happy. It was a compromise bill. That's what they're supposed to do in politics. He derailed it so he could go on the campaign trail and make comments like border bloodbath. They're poisoning the blood of our country and people applaud. Cops back him. He did it so he could talk like this and make hateful statements. And why? Because it has worked. It has worked in the past with other dictators For instance, Hitler and Mussolini. And it's happened in recent history in other countries. And now it looks like it might happen here. I'm Gloria Moraga, Political Woman. This is the Political Woman Podcast. Please subscribe. Please follow me on TikTok and YouTube. All right. Trump's racism is nothing new. Nothing new. So he's had these ugly rants in Michigan and in other states. The Michigan rant was about an undocumented immigrant who murdered a young woman. This is from the New Republic. He was allegedly undocumented immigrant. Trump is taking these crimes, one or two crimes around the country, and using it as if this is a major problem all over the United States, and it is not. It's like a conventional campaign, but it is not a conventional campaign. He's cherry-picking isolated incidents to smear immigrants overall, which basically insults all of us. Because very few of us, my friends, did not immigrate to the United States. We are a country of immigrants. 
the New Republic calls Trump's racist comments deranged, malicious, hateful public conduct. And this should be the real story here. It should be covered this way, but nobody's doing it. Trump lied about the Michigan case, said he talked to the sister. The sister flatly denies that Trump talked to any family member. Liar. Liar. He's twisting the murder of others, including a murder in Georgia. He called that suspect there an illegal alien animal. He repeated again, describing undocumented immigrants as not human. They're not human, quote, he said. They're animals. He tries to keep vague, vague, but we know who he's talking about. He's talking about people of color, in this instance, immigrants. He's called immigrants murderers, prisoners, drug dealers, mental patients, terrorists. They're wrecking our country, poisoning our blood. Whose blood? Whose blood are they poisoning? I just posted a short video on President Biden at the Key Bridge surveying the collapse and the damage of that tragedy. And I looked at the background of all those men who died on that bridge when the ship hit the bridge. All immigrants, all family men, all hardworking citizens who came to this country and took any job that they could get. And they were doing one of the most dangerous, thankless jobs in the world, working on a bridge on the overnight shift, filling potholes when they died, doing a job most people don't want to do because it is freaking dangerous to be on a bridge, filling potholes with drunk drivers and the like, putting your life in danger. That's the story of most immigrants. There's no blood poisoning going on. And Trump blaming Biden for this is ridiculous. Border Patrol officials have said that one of the suspects in one of these crimes is a, quote, gotaway. It's that's government speak for immigrants who slipped through and that if the Border Patrol had caught him, they would have deported him immediately under Biden, under Trump, under any president. Again, look at statistics. There's no evidence that migrants are driving any kind of crime wave. But that's okay because now, thanks to the Republicans in the Congress, they're grasping on this hate migrant story as an issue. The Republican National Committee, which is now basically the Trump committee, has an official website devoted to chronicling migrant crime. That's, that's Trump's phrase. He wants us to all use that phrase, migrant crime, illegal alien crime, it's on the on the website, because they're all enabling Trump and they are all jumping on the racism bandwagon. Let's drive the country apart. Let's make it them and us. <sighs> the Trump racism is nothing new. And I'll give you some examples. In the 1970s, Trump's real estate company tried to avoid renting apartments to African-Americans and they gave preferential treatment to whites, according to the federal government and documents they've gathered. Here's a soundbite. Two years ago, my friend and I applied for an apartment in the Wilshire in Queens, New York, and we were both told that there were no vacancies. I realized that there were vacancies because they still had the ads running, and I was pretty sure it was because of the color of our skin. We were prepared, have always felt that the Trump organization was biased, and I will go to my grave with that thought. Moving on, December 2015, Trump called for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States including refusing to readmit Muslim American citizens who were outside of the country at that time. A federal judge was hearing a case about Trump University, and Trump said he was biased because of the judge 
was of Mexican heritage. June 2017. Trump said 15,000 re- Trump said 15,000 recent immigrants from Haiti all have AIDS. Uh-huh. And at 40,000 Nigerians once seen the United States would never go back to their huts in Africa. At the White House when he was president, he called for less immigration from Haiti and Africa and more from Norway. Trump regularly demonized dark-skinned immigrants before the 2018 midterm elections. He had a political ad in 2018 that showed a caravan of migrants traveling through Mexico, and it was so racist, Fox declined to air it. I'm getting this timeline information from the New York Times, a really great article called Donald Trump's Racism the definitive list. So these items that I'm listing are from the New York Times, documented by two reporters. The list was originally published in January 2018. As time has gone on, obviously there are many, many more racist comments and actions that Trump has made, things he's done. I won't even get into all of the examples of Trump's attacks on President Obama, because I just don't want to even go there because even finding and looking for some of these sound bites from Trump made me sick. He's attacked Native Americans. He mocked Elizabeth Warren, nicknamed her Pocahontas, and on and on. I'm looking at some of the examples and I don't want to read them. (laughs) I've said the part about Latinos aren't human, and so this goes back to Hitler. And it goes back to Mussolini and how they gave speeches trying to drive countries apart. This is from one of the articles I read. I think it's from the Washington Post. Trump's obsession with bloodlines was instilled by his father, the son of a German immigrant. Trump thinks there is good blood and bad blood, superior blood and inferior blood. Fred Trump taught his son that their family's success was genetic, reminiscent of Hitler's creepy faith in eugenics. You know, the superior race, the white superior race. He told his autobiographer, the family subscribes to a horse race theory of human development. He says they believe that there are superior people. If you put together the genes of a superior woman and a superior man, you get superior offspring. So that's right out of Hitler, right out of Hitler's playbook. And he's talked about this recently in 2020 in a speech. The examples just go on and on and on for pages and pages. It's not just brown people, but when I see comments from people and they say they're Latinos for Trump. It's like, look at the plans. Look at the documents that are online and it's right out there. Here's what Trump said recently about mass deportations. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And one of the plans is to build camps out in the deserts to house quote, unquote, illegal immigrants. A recent law passed in Texas, which is now being reviewed by appeals court, would allow police in Texas to detain people of color if they suspect they might be illegal immigrants. And someone said, it's yeah, it's driving well brown. If you look brown, they're going to detain you. They're going to detain you stop you and ask you, you know, ask for your papers. What papers? I'm getting my new driver's license. I can't find my birth certificate. I know it's here. It's not in the lockbox where I thought it was. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on, my friends. Be afraid. Be very afraid and vote. This wasn't easy to put this podcast together to listen to the sound bites from Trump to read all of the things he has done throughout his life 
and the comments he's made about people and see him standing on stage with the cops behind him and people cheering. And yes, I have watched way too many Hitler documentaries in my life because I always worried that it was going to happen. I'm Gloria Moraga. This is the Political Woman Podcast, here to share politics, policy, what politicians are doing, who's running for office, what's happening in the courts, and wondering what the hell is happening to our country. Yes, there are calls for a civil war, that Roseanne Barr, it's now some big Trump fan, said it's going to be 1776 all over again. What are they talking about? Come on, people. We don't want to die like that. All of us. Please subscribe. Please follow me. Yeah, I'm trying to be upbeat. (laughs) It's about time I did an update on the plans from the 2025 campaign. I'll try to have that next. Please subscribe. Please follow me. Be safe.